throughout the nation and around the globe. From his heart to yours, it's Dear James Live, bringing you intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions. Hello, Hello everybody. everybody. Good, good morning, morning to those of you that are in the north, north and good, oh, I'll, I'll just say good morning. Good, good evening, evening to all of you guys, guys in the south with, with me. me. I'm, I'm so glad to be able to join this evening and listen. We, we <laughs> tried to Instagram live earlier. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, that was a learning curve, curve. and that's probably what we're going to be speaking about, about today. today. Uh, I'm, I'm so, so excited, excited to, get, to be joined by my co-host, dear James. James, James how's, how's it going? How's, going? how's things, things on your end? end? It's good, Jacqueline. How are you? It's so good to see you and be with you. See, we had we had fun on Instagram, and and here we are on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> We had, a, we had a good, good like, one, one minute. minute. <laughs> 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 yeah, we did it because I was like, no, yeah, we don't want to yet. Yeah. So, so we, 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 yeah, you know, you know what? what? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm super, super excited, excited to be here. here. I literally, we were talking about it earlier, and, and Wednesdays cannot come, come sooner. I'm so, so excited for Wednesdays now. To be, to be able to connect, connect with you, to be able to connect, connect with all of you that are listening, please will you also let us know that you are here, let us know where you're joining from, because that's where we can actually see, see you, we can really see you if you're, if you're actually commenting. commenting. James, James, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to those of um, the followers and the viewers that don't know about you? Absolutely. I am Dear James, and I am an intuitive, and I offer intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions. And I'm an author, a radio host, and a worldwide consultant. And so it's really great. I listen to the unseen, and so I call it spirit, source, and symphony. And I intuit. I listen to what they have to say, and then I impart that to both individually, in groups, or for the collective like we're doing here. And how about you, Jacqueline, really? Yeah. An intro on you and, and human design. Yes. Oh, oh my God. God. Listen, listen, I first, first wanted to say, say that, that I've been... been I was, I was raised very like spiritual, spiritual, so I have been connecting with intuitives like pretty, pretty much my entire life. life. And, and I, I think, think we're all intuitive on a certain, certain level. And I think you kind of just, just really embodied your gift, gift where you're now able to use it up service so you can actually guide everyone, everyone else also, also on their path, which is so beautiful. So, so myself, I am the Lady Jackson, a human designer expert and leadership coach. I use, I use human design to hold space for you to awaken your truth to where you to really, really, really connect with your strength, your life purpose, purpose why, why you're here, so that you can kind of have flow in relationships, so that you can have clarity in what you do within your career, with your business, and, and, and all of those beautiful things. So for me, human design is such a practical tool. I am, I am a projector, projector. So, so for those, those of you that are familiar already with human design, design you'll be like, like oh, it's a typical projector, projector but, but we are here, here to master systems and for me, human, human design, design is my, my system that I've mastered. So, so let's talk, James. James do you want to dive straight into the collective energy update? update? Absolutely. And, and just to tag on, you are an amazing human design expert and facilitator, projector. It's, a, it's amazing what you do. And, and as you said earlier on Instagram, you know, we never talk about in, in advance what the, what's going to come to us, what we share with the collective and everything. And so it's just really beautiful how kismet it is and the unseen working with us and then your expertise in human design. And I'm always in awe. So. And just to acknowledge quickly, uh, Samantha's here. She says, woohoo, there's a slight echo on Jacqueline's end, not on James. Hee hee, but it's working. Yay. <laughs> you know, that's just, you know, Jacqueline, it's just the universe. You know, they're just testing us and saying, let's have some fun with these two. Let's see how it all rolls. And, you know, and we go from there. So, and it's kind of an interesting piece because it tags on to the, the message for the collective. For and these are timeless. While we come together on Wednesdays, there's a there's a broader uh, reach of the time frame because of course time on the other side doesn't exist. It only exists for us um, on Earth, if you will, as an Earth sphere um, aspect. So to jump in really quickly, the numbers are really auspicious today. So it's eleven twenty four twenty twenty one. And 11 on its own is a master number. It's the most intuitive number. And so then you go to the 24. Well, 2 and 4 becomes 6. 
Six is about spirit and service. Add the 11 and the 6 together, it's a 17. In the I Ching, 17 is follow, be led. You have 5, which 2021 is a 5 year. And so 5 is about change. And so add the 17 and the 5, you get another master number, 22. The most powerful number. So here in between the 11 and the 22 is the 6, the 17, and the 5. Spirit and service, change and be led, follow, be led. So there's an important message here, very auspicious, powerful message here, just in the numbers, that's talking about the fact that we're in a very supported prime moment. It's like prime moment in your life, prime time. It's prime time, is what they're saying to me. And so we all need to act accordingly. We need to open ourselves to the magic of the universe, the change of the universe, This whole thing of being led, follow, be led, listen to your soul source connection. And then, and then uh, I want to, uh, I'm going to give you the three and then we'll come back in because I want to get your input and then we'll, we'll come back to them. But just quickly, it's about a jolt to the system, expansion. So this is an expanding time, a time of expansion. They're saying great expansion. And then they said, move through the fear. Never hold on to it. Don't hold on to it. And then auspicious outcomes. What lies on the other side? Utopia. So there's a dream aspect, meaning what we dream of, what we desire, what we want is truly possible. It's here. It's going to arrive. It has arrived. And that's what's on the other side. Mm, I absolutely, absolutely love, love that. that. As you can be so, so calls, messages, just, just to say, say that, that I mean, there might, might be a bit of laptop feedback in terms of the sound. sound. So, so let's, let's see if, if um, because I, I did notice that, that earlier, earlier when, when I, I it just happens when I speak, um, James, James with you, when, when I'm speaking, speaking see if you can mute and, and see if it will be better in terms, terms of the sound. And then, and then guys, guys, if you could just let us know, sorry, sorry technical difficulties, but you know what? what? This is all about expansion. It feels uncomfortable, right? And this is kind of what we're going through is that feeling of like, discomfort so that we can actually expand so we can get this right and we are living proof of this so we got kicked out of instagram we've got sound issues here (laughs) and um okay cool yes it worked deborah says yes samantha says yes fabulous we figured it out together okay so i just want to quickly talk about what james you were saying about you were talking previously or you didn't mention now about the numbers i want you to mention can you go ahead and just mention the numbers that you mentioned on instagram just walk through those numbers again slowly because i think that was really powerful for people to really kind of embody the numbers and then i want to jump into the um human design number that correlates with the number that you picked up you want to go ahead and say and and introduce Introduce the the numbers Yes. So again, we have the numbers 11. So it's the, it's a prime number. It's the most intuitive. Then we have the 24 becomes a six. That's about spirit and service. When you add the 11 and the six together, you get 17. It's follow, be led. And we're talking about your soul source connection, not ego mind. Listen to your soul and follow, be led. And then 2021 is a five. It's about change. And when you add um, the 5 and the 17 together, you get the other master number, which is 22, which is the most powerful. That's beautiful. So there's two things that I wanted to pick up. The first one with the ending with the 22, which is the most powerful in numerology, which is the master builder. The most powerful in human design is the 34. And the gate 34 is actually transiting at the moment in the sun gate, as well as as um, the south node, which is going to be transiting for the next couple of uh, weeks. So it's, it pretty much is in that energy for about two months, give or take. So there's a lot of energy right now. Like 34 is known as the power gate, right? Because it's the only gate that actually powers three other gates, which is the gate 10 that comes from the identity center, the G center, the gate 20, which is in the throat, and then the gate 57, which is in that spleen, right? So the gate 34 is all about the energy or the energy to back your inspired action, right? So right now, and this, and I can see already you're nodding because you're like, yeah, I'm going to be speaking. So it's incredible how 
we're we're you're coming from that numerology numbers and and the numbers that they showed you they being spirit right and i'm looking at what's transiting at the moment and it's correlating so beautifully because it's telling a story and you mentioned earlier where you said ego mind right like not being ego led being soul led and that i'm definitely going to be touching on because what we want to end off with or i want to end off with actually is venus going retrograde and going to be in retrograde for the next say i think it's about two months or just short of two months and what that's going to bring and we've already hit a bit of that shadow period so we can already feel that energy but james talk a little bit about kind of that change because with expansion comes change right and uncertainty and that feeling of like is this the next step like is this the right next step like am i actually supposed to do this i've been getting a lot of questions from people saying i want to shift i want to move but is this the right time like where do i go to birth like actually being physically moving like moving location ending relationships shifting starting new relationships you know uh, collaborations business partners um any kind of shift and change there's a lot of that happening but it's almost like that before you actually need to have the courage and the confidence in the trust and the knowing that even though you don't know, you still got to take a step and kind of surrender into, you know, that expansion, that transformation. Do you want to speak a little bit to that? Absolutely. And it's funny when you were you were just mentioning about the relationships and and so forth. There's it's very wise at this time. You know, they often say it's easy to get into a relationship, far harder to get out of one. That's that's one statement. And the other is this statement of um, better to be alone than be with the wrong person. So these are wise gems at this moment because there's so much change going on. So just really take a moment in, on that front of change to, to step back and see, is this the right moment? Is this the right time? Um, and then listen, you'll know. I mean, I am walking the talk in terms of what you just said, in terms of um, having a literal physical move. And it was very funny because I've been where I am for about 15 months. I've known when I came, you know, they said, you know, oh, it's not going to be long. Okay, well, universe time and earth time, not long, was, I thought, a couple months, you know, 15 months later. But I always knew that I wasn't staying. I knew that it was temporary. Um, and literally it's very funny because at this moment right now, it was like, okay, it's time to go. And of course what they do is they, they don't show you down and around the corner. They just say, okay, it's time to go. And you have a knowing and what you'll do to test that knowing, at least what I did, I'm walking the talk is I said, okay, well, let me reach out. If I meant to stay here, let me see if this place is available or that place is available, or I like that one or this one. No, 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 no. <laughs> and so you get very quickly. So this is about leading with your soul and listening with your soul source connection because they're going to guide you to true north. And what I did come to realize in this moment, and I'm literally after this show, I'm pack, I, the car's packed, I'm, I'm leaving. And I'm going to where I know to go and I'm going north a few hours and I'm going to stay in a hotel and I knew that it was proximity. So there's this beautiful thing of, I may not know literally in finality where I'm going, but what I do know is that the purpose and the reason is about expansion. It's about taking me to the next best thing, the next life experience. And so really trust that, really listen. Your mind is going to, you know, you're going to hem ha up, down, sideways. And the minute it's like you, Jacqueline, speaking about the bike, and we had, you know, we spoke about that briefly on Instagram. You know, once you pass through the fear and you just say, okay, you immediately, the energy immediately changes. It shifts. You get a peace inside and you say, okay, this is the right thing, even if I can't see all the way through it. And that's so important for everyone listening to, to uh, in this current energy of this, a jolt to the system. Well, the jolt is the expansion. The jolt is the moving you forward. The jolt is the shaking the tree. <laughs> and literally, it can be your foundation, literally, like where you're physically living. 
or the relationship you're in, everything you've just talked about. So, uh, absolutely. absolutely. It's incredible because for me, I've got the gate 51 and it's all about shock and it's actually in my son. So my entire laugh, uh, laugh, laugh, it's a laugh because my entire life has been a shock. Literally, <laughs> like I've either shocked people um, or like life has shocked me, but it has been for the purpose of expansion. So shock is not to shock you kind of like to the lesser version of yourself. It's about shocking you into the higher frequency, into the person that you're designed to be, right? So when you're talking about these shifts, and, and I want to practically give you a, um, an example for those of you that are, are joining us. I see Samantha, I see Amy, I see Deborah. Please let us know. That's the only way we can see you is if you give us a comment and we'll give you a shout out and say hello. Is I'll give you, and this is what James, you're talking about, is um, a quick little story of cycling. And it was, I'm not a fearful person in terms of like a lot of things don't scare me, right? And I do have my, I'm going to talk about it in human design language as well. Um, so I've got my Phoenix Center defined. And it is also my, um, my inner authority. So it's the way that I'm best designed to make decisions is actually listening to my instinct, my, my instinctual, intuitive knowing in the moment. It like speaks to me, right? And it's designed to keep me safe. But as soon as I open up to it, and any of you that also ask me, Nick, inner authorities, as soon as you open up to it, and open up means you quiet the mind and you allow that instinctual, intuitive guidance to come through, right? And as soon as it, it does come through, it's actually also, it guides you with, with subtle nuances of, of directional inspired action. Like, you know, this is the way you're supposed to go. This is the way you're supposed to go. And that's how my cycling journey started. Like literally, I haven't been cycling for a year yet. Last year, December, I, and if you had asked me before, like even if you had asked me like a week before, well, I, would I would have said, have said never. never. I would, I would never, never get, get onto, onto a bike. A bike. I, would I would never, never like, like jump, jump on and say, say um, like, like this, this is my thing. thing. And, and I, I walked, walked past because we were visiting, visiting um, family friends in Durban, and I walked past their bikes were in their in their house, and I walked past, and in immediately I had this feeling of like, ooh, maybe we should go for a cycle, and that was it. Like I literally got onto the bike, and I just knew this is something I want to explore. This is something that I that's going to take me further, and it did. And I've cycled distances that most people take years to cycle. And with that, that expansion comes a whole lot of other things, which is falling and, you know, the uncomfortable feeling of learning, learning something new that your body doesn't understand or doesn't know yet. It's like when you're driving a car for the first time, you got to learn all of the things, all of the aspects. And I had three really bad falls that ended up in a, a concussion and also a fracture to my elbow in my arm so I was basically out from cycling for three months and in those three months it was it was like the universe was saying literally you got to take a step back so those shocking moments were there to kind of push me down so something that you're going through now seems like a shock it seems like it's not working out for you but when you look back trust me you'll look back and go oh I get it right now you might not get it but when you look back you'll say I'll get it and three months I had to take a, I had to take rest. I had to take, I had to take the time out. And everyone kept asking me, when are you getting back on the bike? When are you, and this fear was like inside of me. And I was like, no, there's no ways. I'm not getting back on the bike. Are you nuts? I fell so hard and it was sore. And I'm, I need some time just to kind of, I just need to take a step back. Right. And the whole time I was like, I will know when the right time is because I will get that same feeling that I did last year, December. I will get it again. And I just allowed it. I allowed that, I call it a dance with fear. I allowed the process just to feel the fear within my body and not respond to it, but just allow it, right? You've got to allow the process. And I got it. I got that ping. I call it a ping. I got that ping. The next day, I phoned my friend. He's been my, I call him a cycling coach, but he's held space beautifully for me to go through this journey. I called him. I said, listen, I'm ready, I want to get back on the bike. And he was like, okay, perfect, we're going to do a cycle. Uh, I think it was like two days later or something. Like, we're getting on the bike, Sunday morning, we're going. And I was like, no, you're nuts. Like, I first want to do this. And he's like, no, we're doing that. <laughs> and he lovingly pushes me, my generator friend. And Sunday or Saturday night, I could not sleep, guys. You know that fear where you feel it in your body and it's that visceral, like, unknown and you, your mind just goes to places where you just think, oh, my gosh, the worst thing is going to happen and you can't sleep. I had to do, like, tapping, EFT tapping to 
de-stress, like release the fear just so that I can go to sleep. When I, the moment I woke up, my eyes opened. I had this lump in my throat. I felt so nauseous. I felt like I was going to go compete. I was so scared. I can't even explain to you. The fear was in my body. But again, I just allowed it. I allowed the feeling just to, just I just sat with it. I danced with it. I just allowed it, right? I didn't allow my mind to wander. I just allowed the thoughts to come up. And I just lovingly just took breaths and I knew, okay, this is what's going to happen and it's totally fine. My butt hit the seat. My feet clicked in. If you, if you know cycling, you've got, to, you've got cleats, you've got to click in. I clicked in and it was instantaneous. It was like a wave of, I'm back. I'm home. This is the place that I'm supposed to be. And that fear that I had moments, literally moments before, was completely gone was completely washed away and it literally is like you click into life so it's but you've got to allow it because if you resist it or if you fight against it you don't allow the process and that's kind of where I suppose that friction happens does that make sense James you want to add yeah absolutely and so a kudos to you because you are that's a walking testament of embracing the moment passing through the fear and it's a very an expansion how it expanded you because in a moment in the in the you know in the uh, accidents and everything you contract and you heal and everything and then you think that you become the lesson and it's never about becoming the lesson it's about transcending it and so yes exactly and so there's that moment where you said oh i've got this and you clicked in you button the seat you click in and off you go and everything falls away and you're like, oh. and that's exactly like this. It's like this moment, you know, you're, you know, in, in my instance, it's bittersweet. I, it's been wonderful. It's been, I've been so grateful for where I am. And yet I know that it comes with the ending. And so the ending, but the beginning is built into it. So that's something for everyone listening, you know, no matter what you're going through, if it is the end of something, literally a physical location, a relationship, a job, it's all built in so that it will move you. It will expand you to the next thing your soul said it wanted to do. The ego, the personality, the mind will negotiate and lie, steal, cheat, do it. You know, it will do whatever it can to maintain what it believes is its safety. It's, its nest is the way they're saying it. And yet, what do what do young what do uh, chicklings do and everything? They have to leave the nest. They have they get taught to fly, and they flutter down, and you know they hit the ground. And mama comes or papa comes and picks them up, puts them back in the nest, and boop, 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 down they go again. But it's it's innate in them to do this. It's innate in us to do this. So, and just one other thing, 51, you were talking about gate 51, and it's so interesting because 51 in the I Ching is thunder, shock, and awe. And it represents also like the tower card in the tarot. And it's important to remember thunder, shock, and awe, the tower. It doesn't mean that it's a negative. It can be, meaning negative, meaning everything's divine and neutral, but negative meaning, you know, a, a, a universe two by four to the, you know, whack. But it can also be something really great. It's, again, propelling you forward. And so that's really important. And also just to remind everyone, Jacqueline, before we continue on, we're taking your questions live. So if there are things going on in your life that you would like human design and intuitive guidance on, please write them in the comments and we'll, we'll take them as they come in and, um, and share with you what we hear and see and, and go through. Um, let's talk about auspicious outcomes because Jacqueline they're really saying that once we move through this jolt to the system this expansion and that we don't hold on to the fear don't hold on to the fear like you about riding getting back in the saddle and riding biking again me about leaving and where you know going to some place that's unseen unknown yet but what lies on the other side of that is auspicious outcomes this utopia which makes me smile I, yeah i don't know if anybody but i'm smiling i'm like woohoo <laughs> to use to use a samantha woohoo <laughs> because that's the energy that it feels like 
so it's incredible when you say because I so I've had quite a few moments especially this year I've had to learn through the process of releasing control and actually trusting because you've got to learn to trust right trust is not this it's not an emotional response it's a visceral response you've got to really trust in your bones life the universe yourself source you know that everything is going to work out it's not this oh i trust no no you've really got to embody that trust and once you do that then you can you you kind of detach less about the clarity of that auspicious outcome and you actually then go into hang on i can dream or i can set an intention for what i want to have happen but the universe life is actually going to show me something bigger that when I look back, I go, oh, I could never have even thought that that was even possible at that moment. But it's like allowing yourself to realize, dream a dream, and then times about two, because I think one of the biggest things is we actually dream, we don't dream a, a dream that's big enough for us to actually continue to motiva- motivate us forward. So that's the first thing is like, dream a bigger dream. Like if you are, you know, leaving a relationship and you're kind of thinking, am I ever going to find someone as good as the person that I'm leaving? Listen, you're parting for a reason and the universe is not going to give you less than, it's going to give you more than, right? And if you're in a space right now and you're single and you're kind of going, gosh, is the right, like, is my other half, is my person actually going to find me? Well, yes, if you are stepping to that energy to connect with the energy frequency of that which you are wanting to manifest. So that, like, the newness, the manifestation that we're talking about, which is already there. So that's another thing. is like the trust in the, do you believe that what you want is already there available for you? Or do you still have to learn to actually connect with the idea that you're worthy of receiving that which you are asking for that's That's a a big question question, yeah and that's it's a brilliant point because it's they often say when i'm I'm interacting with clients and well uh, robin has a question so but they often say you know are you done with the lesson and it's such a beautiful thing it's exactly what you're speaking to because you can be done with the lesson in a nanosecond. You can see someone coming and you're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, got it. Thank you. And you move right past that it within seconds, minutes. Like, no, no, I've, I've seen this. I got it. I got the lesson. I, I, I got it. So that you move to the next energy level. You move and you attract at a higher frequency, a higher level. Other times you will witness where people have gone, um, and this is so funny, but they will be in a relationship, they'll part. And they come into new partners and the friends and the family around them. And they're like, this is like 2.0 or 3.0 or 5.0. And you kind of laugh and you're like, yes, because you're not done with the lesson. It's only when you're done with the lesson. It's that beautiful. I, I, it's like a circular uh, escalator. And I'm like, so it's like, oh, okay, are we going up to the next level? Okay, we step off here. Okay, now we're ready to go again. Okay, we step off. We go up and... This is that exactly what you're talking about. I also also want to say, Kitty, it's it's not a bad thing to have it repeat itself because sometimes the repetition actually allows you to go deeper. So I know for me, my biggest lessons have been through my relationships. And it's also because I have a left angle cross. So when you left angle, you're transpersonal. So a lot of my growth transformation happens through connections with the other. And if I look at my life, like, I've repeated things in relationships, but it wasn't the same thing. It was like deeper. It allowed to go, it allowed me to go deeper into that trauma that, and you know, listen, if I, if I look back now, I'm so grateful because if I had to go through all of that at one time, I don't know if my heart could have handled it, right? So sometimes you got to say thank you universe for seeing the journey and laying out the journey for me before so that I can before I was even ready right so it's like sometimes we want the thing to come now like we want that that desire that intention or that manifestation we want it now but are you even ready for it and if it's not here it's because you're not ready for it yet so you're still getting ready so you kind of have to give gratitude for the process 
of allowing yourself to to dig deeper in the soil so that you can plant that seed so you can have those roots so that the tree that can be you know that can come up that can grow and that the fruits on the trees are is actually the thing that you're wanting but you've got to have those deep roots right yeah no yeah it's true i mean and, and again you know the the learning of the lessons and everything you know transcending them so as you're articulating it's not necessarily the same exact lesson it's the soul saying okay we're going to we're going to deepen this or broaden this and so forth it's only when when the lesson is identical it's when you really can see oh i'm repeating exactly what i did before and expecting a different outcome you know so that's where you want to be very mindful that you can see it coming and you go oh okay got it no thank you and you move right through it that's really paramount beyond that then yes it's it's a different and it's to remember again of course as you were saying in gratitude every single person is playing the role you asked of them from a soul level soul perspective they're all characters we're all characters in each other's play and that's the beauty of it is is we should always come from a state of gratitude because they are showing up to mirror something to us that we asked them to play some role to play so that we would receive it. We would get the lesson and ultimately the gift, the pearl. Um, do you want to read uh, Robin's question? Oh, yeah, sure. Cool. Oh, the question. So Robin asks, hi, Jacqueline and James. So I'd like to ask about my career and relationships. So career wise, I absolutely love my job and the environment that I work in, but I don't feel that I'm earning my worth. I feel quite conflicted because I always have a lot of anxiety about looking for a new job and potentially ending up somewhere I'm not happy. Not sure whether to stay where I am for another year or put myself out there and look for something else. My second question is about relationships and the people I attract. I'm constantly attracting the wrong type of relationship and I'm just wondering when the right one will come along. When will I find my man? <laughs> she puts laughing faces. That's a question a lot of people ask. James, do you, want, want, do you, want, you want to go, go ahead and, and answer the question or do you want me to, to look at the chart first? Jewish or, or I'll, I'll impart to all you're looking at the chart if you'd like. Is that... And then we'll, um, so Robin, right off the bat, between these two questions and the theme that they've given us today about expansion. So the two that are, the, the, the issue here is about self-value, self-worth, self-expression, not being afraid to expand beyond where you currently are. And here again, it's about moving beyond our comfort zones. So you have this place that you love, that you like, and so forth, and yet there's a value disconnect. You're not, you're not, being, you're not receiving the, the value, the exchange that you believe, well, even though you love it. The issue then about choosing people and when will that person arrive? The answer to that question is that person will arrive the minute you mirror that energy. That's exactly what Jacqueline was talking about earlier. So in both of these instances, in both of these cases, the common thread is you, you know, like I, I, the way they're giving it to me is like stand up and I'm, th I'm throwing my head back. You can, you know, it's like I'm up and my, I'm getting my, my whole back and my head goes up and erect and more tall. And as in, I know my value. I know my worth. It's no judgment on where you are. Wonderful place, wonderful people. And it mirrored, it resonated an energy that you needed, loved, like at that time. You may still love it. And yet, what's on the other side? More. Something broader, deeper, higher, of greater value and consistency. You just have to be willing to, to be that and, and search for it. You know, say to the universe, I got it. Okay, yes, this is the way I'm going. And bring to me the people, places, and things that will mirror that, that desire and that value, that self-value, that self-worth. Um, because they're saying you, you, have, you absolutely have it within you. It is not something you're lacking or, or outside of you. It's there. You just have to ignite it, engage it, 
and then stay in that space, that energy, that field. I love it. So looking at her chart and it's, I love how it's so like, so the first thing that you can see within your chart, Robin, is that with your open heart center and it's completely open, that's exactly what James is speaking to about self-worth. So an open heart center, the shadow side of it speaks to that, that, that um, neediness to prove, like I have to prove my worth, right? Or I've got to do in order to receive value or who do you think you need to be in order to get, you know, the connection or attention or the um, recognition that you're looking for, right? So there's that, that sense of worthiness that, that definitely comes up quite strongly. Um, it's that the worthiness of knowing that it's, you already know that you deserve better. And it's like, the reason is it's not, again, it's not because it's, it, it's not working. It's because your soul wants you to shift to the next version of you, right? And that is why you're getting this inclination of, oh, hold on, I want to shift. I want to move. I want to, I want to take inspired action. You are a pure generator. So for you, exactly what James said, people, the, the person that you're wanting to attract, you're going to magnetically attract them when you're at the frequency that connects with that frequency that you're wanting to attract, right? And at the moment, the people that you're attracting is because that's the frequency you're putting out. You're a magnet. And I want to almost say you're a double, like that's how you're designed to best use your energy because not only are we all, doesn't matter what type we are, we're all attracting beings, generators, you're magnetic. So you, you're, you're using that energy and really attracting all of life's opportunity, people, things, circumstances towards you for you to respond to, right? So the people that you're attracting, you're responding saying, oh, these are not necessarily the right people. Then you're not looking at the people, you're looking internally and saying, okay, my energy, the magnetic vibration that I'm pulsing out is not at the frequency that I actually want to attract, so I've got to step it up a notch. I've got to love myself more. I've got to work on my worthiness. I've got to work on my self-worth um, and my value and my love for myself, right? And then I've also got to trust in the process that, I've, that, that life has, but also trust in my life force energy because all you've got to do is you've, you've got the 3410. So for you, it's like, it's like um, you, you're naturally empowering yourself. So all you've got to do is behave in your highest expression of who you are. So behave in the way that's really you, cute, satisfied, lovable, um, you know, lover of, of beautiful things, naturally skilled, a beautiful listener, always looking to try and find answers practical um, a thinker, take all of that, embody that, be the highest version of yourself, trust your life force to guide you to the next inspired action in terms of your work, right? And then also what's coming up is that 1858 is that channel. And for you, it's also part of your, your North Node, right? So it's your mastery in this life is about correction and that's that perfectionism energy and you can hear it when you ask the question you're like mm, i know i gotta move but i'm unsure because i don't know the exact right way there's a perfect way to do this there's no perfect way to do anything so for you it's transcending the correction the perfection the needing to make sure it's perfect before and actually trust in the knowing that if i'm inspired to do something it is right even though i don't know all the answers right now the answers will come because the universe will show it to you. Does that make sense? Let us know if that resonates with you. And I just wanted to add two other things because they popped in, Jacqueline, uh, for Robin while you were speaking. One is I keep seeing the sun directly overhead of her. And so it immediately says to me, again, you, you radiate. You have everything you need. Um, if standing in the literal sun, like to just take in that, that, uh, warmth, the vibrancy, the nutrition of that will help you. It'll strengthen your core, but you have the sun directly overhead. I mean, it's, it's innate within you. And then they were also saying, and this has also been, as Jacqueline was just saying, so from a per perfectionist value system and so forth, 
perspective. You know, they're saying to me, and it makes me laugh a little bit, because they're saying, in a sense, with, with, with both the career, the jobs, the men, so forth, the relationships, it's like you've been dabbling. You know, you've been playing on the other side, so to speak, um, as a means from a soul way in order to know what you want and what you don't want. So again, everything is purposeful. There are no mistakes. This was your soul literally, uh, they're kind of like saying, like dancing in the, dancing in the light, dancing in the shadow. It's like your you're you're playing you're you're playing you've been very like okay let me just dabble here let me see your heart's desire is permanency a, a very high caliber permanency but you also needed to dance in the light dance in the shadow so that you really know when that happens that it's real that it's right that it's that is correct um so that was another piece coming in for you um so Debbie has a question, Jacqueline. Um, Dear James and the Lady Jacqueline, I'm wondering if either of you can tell what is causing pain in my body that is limiting my ability to do daily tasks. Mm. Jane, do you, you want to go ahead? Just because, because I've asked Debbie for her chart details, because I actually okay. don't have her dates in the time Absolutely. with. So, so if you can just add that in, Debbie, that would be amazing. Before, Before you start, start I just, just want to say, Robin says, thank, thank you so, thank you both so much. Definitely resonates. Um, and, and I know, I know it does. And, and, it's, like, like, and, and it's so interesting because while we just wait for you and you also connect, it's interesting because sometimes we, well, not sometimes, all of the times, we know the answers, right? We know it. So the thing is, sometimes you just need that shock or that reminder or even the permission to actually say, oh, wait, that is actually true. That's what I was thinking. And that's exactly where I'm supposed to go. So um, all the things that we'll tell you, it's not going to not resonate. It's going to be like, wait, I knew that. Like that, That's exactly what it is. And sometimes it's tough love, right? James, do you, yeah. you, are you, are getting, you getting the guidance? guidance? Yes. Yeah, so with, for Debbie, um, so what's coming in is that there's, so in essence, a neuro, a neurological, a, a, you know, it's almost like center spine, center column and l electromagnetic. So this kind of where it's almost pinching, there's something that is, um, I don't know if you had an accident, um, an accident, car accident, anything like that that may have come, but there's something where there's something pinching or something um, that is neural and pinching, and that's causing you to experience pain and limitation. Um, it's, they're, they're using the word, you know, you experiencing, in essence, lack. So lack in ability, lack in um enthusiasm you know lack lack because it's in a sense becomes debilitating um so um so they want you so what i'm hearing is citrus water so a lot of the times what's very interesting is um so lemon is a natural astringent for the body and so when you do a mixture of lemon water and so forth it also helps to purify the body it's taking things out so do so you know consume citrus water lemon water infused with lemon lime a little bit of lime not um and do so so that you know in in concert with your body in concert with knowing you don't want it to become too um but it's also ph there's a there's an issue where our bodies are naturally acidic when we drink lemon in uh, water infused with lemon it raises our ph levels so that helps our body naturally heal it will help to um and you can there are little tests you can get uh i forget what the little papers are but you do them and it will tell you your uh your ph balance and everything your acidity levels so anytime you have mindful of sugars be mindful if you're consuming too much sugar but these are some natural remedies natural ways that you're able to start bringing your body into a more optimal place that it will heal it can heal itself it will because you're placing it into that mode of of operating um 
again, you might also want to, if you haven't already, um, investigate a chiropractor, anything that has to do with the central nervous system down through the spine and everything, and see if that um, if that assists you. Because I, I, I'm I'm seeing that it's affecting like your hand, your arms, your hands, things of that nature. These this pinching, this um, almost kind of wincing, like it, it, it immobilizes you, it stops you. And you take a moment or you take a beat and then you, you go on. Um, let me know if that's resonating for you, um, Debbie. Okay, so I just want to remind um, you guys, in order for me to look at your human design charts, I actually have to see your human design charts. And in order for me to do that, I'm going to just need your date of birth, your time of birth, and your place of birth. So place is country and city, and time is as accurate as possible as you can, as you know. I have worked with charts that, um, you know, for whatever reason, the time of birth was unknown. That's perfectly fine. We can kind of look at the overall energy for the day. Um, but in order to look at your human design, you know, we're going to need your date of birth, your time of birth, your place of birth. Or alternatively, if you do know what your human design type is, you can enter it in as well when you ask the question. So you can give me your type, you can give me your profile, and you can give me your inner authority. Um, that kind of gives me a, just a general, but if you want a deeper overview, then uh, I've got to have your details. So I see Debbie has given me a detail. So I'm going to just need a second just to enter it in here, if you don't mind, guys. <laughs> yeah, and so... Um... And again, what would be also um, for anybody listening in future, um, by all means, um, direct message the Lady Jacqueline um, at the Lady Jacqueline on Instagram or Facebook. And that way, if you want to ask questions while we're doing these every Wednesday, um, she'll have that information in advance and everything. And you can also submit your questions to at Dear James LLC if you have them in advance. So we'll take those as well and do them and thread them throughout these, uh, the journey. So let's move to, just, or are you I'm ready? I'm just going to see Debbie. Debbie. No, no Debbie, Debbie, I don't, I don't know, know where you were born. born eh? so, so you just need to let me know um, where, where you were born. So what, what, what uh, country, country and what city, city you were born in. That would be amazing. amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, yes, James, do you, do you want, want to move on to something, something while I get into a chat? Absolutely. So Samantha is um, submitting a question. She said, in October, I left an interior design program due to how I felt mistreated and not fully satisfied with the teachers. Um, sorry, that moved. With the teachers who I met through to the time I left. I am trying again where I applied to a different university for interior design. I'm feeling fearful because I don't want that same toxic energy again on top of the desire of my own on top of the desire of my own business and other uh, passions design I also feel like I am at a spiritual or soulful crossroad thoughts coming to mind are either a difficult choice I either stop one desire or go with both desires I was I also was in a motor vehicle accident just throwing this in during this time Maybe a, re a repetition from last week. Um, thoughts, thoughts I have at this time. So, Sam, um, so remember. So they're saying some. They're they're articulating it something about a rebellious, a rebellious nature, uh, a, re a rebellious persona, and so they're saying. To remember that, so when you're when you're the the star pupil, when that happens, um, people are aware of you, and you are aware of them, and how we perceive each other, and how we interact with each other. So you may feel in one instance that you're far far more advanced, and that can just be simply intuitively, innately, and. If the person then teaching the course isn't equally advanced to you in that moment, that can create a, a disconnect. It can create a, a schism in the relationship or the experience. 
And the issue is to place yourself in a, let me see what this person, this person has come to me, I'm in this class for a reason. Let me see what that reason is. Be open to what the reason is. It may not be the one that's causing you disappointment, frustration, um, an, an ill, you know, an ill-fitted relationship. But it doesn't mean that that program or that person doesn't have something to offer you. That's often it's often hidden. Um, and so that would be the first thing that I'm hearing for you is. Um, you are you are more suited for this new program. Just be mindful of what of what transpired in the previous one. It's not it's not always as cut and dry. You know, it's not always black and white. There's there's this piece of where could I have it has nothing to do with them because we're speaking for you. What could I have received or done differently if I had uh, stepped back, been more open or receptive. Um, because again, you have an advanced nature, which, and you don't suffer fools lightly. <laughs> so it, you can be very quick in you know, both judgment and discernment. So just be mindful of that um, moving forward. Jacqueline? Okay, okay, so, so I've, I've got, got Debbie's chance. Debbie. Samantha, let us know how that resonates for you, what James just said. I think that was super, super powerful. Um, I'm going to dive into Debbie's chart. So Debbie, generator, love generator energy. I just want to quickly read. So your, your question was about body pain, that limits the ability of simple daily tasks. So James spoke a lot about that visceral body kind of what could be coming up for you. Now, if we look at your chart, remember your chart is like, I would say, your roadmap to understanding your truth. And if we look at your chart with that generator energy, you're guided by your life force energy. So for you, you've got to do what lights you up. So the first question that I would ask you is, apart from the, the visceral pain that you're feeling in your body, are the simple daily tasks that you're wanting to do actually satisfying to you? Make sure that they're satisfying because if you're doing it just because you think you need to do it, someone else told you you need to do it, you have a belief about why you're needing to do it, then you're, you're going to be met with this level of frustration that could be manifesting as pain in your body because potentially you aren't listening. So your body's saying, hang on, I really don't want to do this. So I'm going to cause you a little bit of pain, right? That's, that could be the extreme case. So the first question for you is those daily tasks that you're wanting to get to. Check each and every single one of them and ask yourself, does this light me up? Does this um, make me feel satisfied? Do I actually want to do this right now, right? Ask yourself those yes and no questions. Give yourselves options. Do I want to do this or do I want to do this right now? And then feel into your body and allow your body to show you what is satisfying for you to actually take action on. So where you're actually inspired to take that action is all about that satisfaction. Now this could Take a while for you, especially if it's an ingrained thing where you're, it's like you've been dealing with this for so long. So it might actually, it's not just, you know, a flip of the switch is going to change. So you're going to have to teach your body, or, or let, let me actually say this, you're going to have to teach yourself to trust your body enough to guide you to what you're designed to do in this now moment, right? For you, it's all about the body. So you have the incarnation cross of the vessel of love. So for you, it's about the body embodying this vehicle that you've been given as the, it literally says, I actually had to like quickly bring out my notes as well. It literally says it's the vehicle for the soul and it's to love the body as a vital element of the soul's expression in this life. So your body is your vehicle for you to be the highest expression, to do the thing that you're designed to do. So for you, it's like if your body is not functioning for you to do the thing that you want to do, I would question not your body necessarily, but the thing that you're wanting to do. Check in with the thought patterns behind what is forcing you or putting pressure on you to do this thing that your body is saying right now, mm, maybe it's not the right time. We've been so conditioned to follow things based on what everybody else says 
you have a unique perspective. You've got a gift to share with us a unique way of doing things. You've got a unique way or outlook at life, right? Maybe you here to challenge a little bit of the of the that status quo of those tasks that we're supposed to do in order to feel satisfaction or be successful or to manifest, right? So the first question for you, along with James's advice on the on the physical, is to really check in. Like the things that I have on my to-do list, is it satisfying me? Because you also have a defined emotional center, you are an emotional inner authority, which means you're not designed, even though your body is telling you in the moment, this is something that you want to do. You've got to wait for your emotions. You've got to feel the feels of your emotions to find clarity if this is actually something that you're going to be consistently, you know, investing your time in. So it, those big decisions that you want to make, maybe there's some changes as well that you want to make with your body now in terms of, you know, the health of your body, the vitality, the wealth, big decisions. Allow yourself to process your emotions because if you make decisions based on how you feel in the moment, emotions don't give you clarity, don't give you truth, right? You've got to find the mean point because one moment you're going to be up here, the next moment you're going to feel a bit like, mm, I don't really want to speak to anybody. And if you make commitments when you're up here feeling excited about life and the commitment is on the day where you feel like, actually, I want to retreat, I want to hermit a little bit, I want to be in my own space then you're going to leave yourself feeling guilty. You're going to feel frustrated. You're going to feel like you aren't meeting expectations, right? So check in with yourself. Make sure that your daily tasks are actually satisfying. And then also honor your inner, your inner, um, your life force energy. It's trying to tell you what is satisfying. And then honor also those emotions that come up and know that your emotions are there to feel. It's like energy, emotion. They've just got to flow through you. So you can get to the meeting, then you can make decisions. Okay, but I really feel strongly your chart is really saying to you, you've got a, a unique perspective, and I have a feeling it's got something to do with the body. So maybe you think about the body in a different way, and you had to show us this different way of dealing with our body, of loving ourselves. But it's everything got to do with this body, this vessel that we've been given. It's all about self-love, right? It's nurturing your body. Do you value your body? Are you how, are you taking care of your body? Your body is that is the is the, the your vessel right but it's also going to tell you it's going to tell you what's up what's 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 not working so check in it's telling you mm, this is not working so maybe instead of pushing oh i got to do these things maybe your body's telling you these aren't the things that i'm supposed to be doing right now let us know if that resonates with you and Jacqueline, so we have Amy asking a question, and uh, and then after that, um, I believe it's Issa, um, and then um, just to say, depending on time, uh, Robin and Sam, um, we'll see if we're able to answer the the last two. Um, but for Amy, she says, "Thank you for this live. I'm interested to find out why my acne keeps returning after I do different detoxes." I found my body is far more sensitive to different foods, substances every time I try something new, as well as others, other around, others around me. So, um, so instantly, Amy, when I was reading that, um, it came that there's, so acne is a form of, of release for the body. So it is, uh, and it can be anything from toxins to, um, energy, emotions, this type of thing. And what came immediately was both emotional and hormonal. So there's this needing this balance that there's a, the way they're saying it to me is there's a, a connective impurity with those from the emotion standpoint and the hormonal standpoint. And so um, they're saying to me, you know, in the most beautiful way, you're a delicate flower. <laughs> it's the most, you know, it's really, truly beautiful how they mean that. And so it's really important for you to stay in harmonic balance. Um, they're giving me the Dr. Bach um, um, remedies. I don't know if you're, they're, um, they're all based on uh, flower essences and so forth. Um, but it's highly important for you to stay emotionally balanced, emotionally connected. Um, 
you know, it's a, it's a heart center. It's a, it's a core belief system because right now you're operating in the sense that this is outside of you. It's external as opposed to it being an internal dance, an internal balance. So, um, you know, and they're, they're saying less is more. So, and what they mean by that is, um, don't, don't try so many things. Don't do too many things. It's kind of find that one harmonic and look at the, uh, the Bach, um, I believe it's Bach flower essences and remedies. Um, and there's a questionnaire there and everything that you'll fill out. And then it will say to you, okay, here's where, um, here's what we recommend for you. Um, they're giving me as well uh, chlorophyll, wheatgrass, these types of things. So again, in mindful, in mindful moderation and everything, but come into hormonal and emotional balance. Um, so I'm just asking if there's something on the hormonal. It says the two are intertwined. The two are connected. And that's where you want to remedy that, bring that into harmony and balance. And that is going to heal, literally heal the rest of you. It's going to um, like dry up, soften. It's like dry up the acne, soften the skin and, and all of this stuff. It's going to bring you into a very um, centered state of, of being. Jacqueline? I just, I just want to make quickly get her, her chart. I'm pulling it up now as we speak. Okay, projector. <laughs> My projector, fellow projector baby. So the first thing I wanted to actually see was, because acne is all about expression, right? So if we look at your chart, and sorry, I'm going to look down because I've actually I'm dealing with two charts here because I've I've pulled up Bess's chart as well, and I've I've got my iPad here with your chart. So the first thing I noticed with your chart is you have a lot of openness, and openness or undefined areas in your chart. You're absorbing the energy frequency from those around you, but also what's happening in the transits. Now, if you think of expression, expression is throat, and your throat is also open. It's undefined, right? Uh, you've only got the thirty-one um, gate that's defined within the throat. So for you, when you look at your, your acne and you look at your expression, are you actually able to truly express your truth, truly express who you are, what you love, where you, where you, where you want to go, who you want to be in this moment? You've also got an open G center. Open G center, you've got to allow yourself to go through the natural process of changing your identity as and when you feel like it. So you got to ask yourself, what is the most authentic me in this moment? And only focus on this moment, this now moment, right? Because this now moment is the only reality we have. We bring the past into our reality by thinking the thoughts and we project the, part, the, the reality of the future into our now moment by worrying about the what ifs. For you, it's about knowing and understanding who do I want to, who do I want to be in this moment? And do I feel confident enough in myself that I'm able to express who I want to be? Where do you feel the pressure from someone else to be someone that you're not? Where do you not feel recognized? Do you not feel seen? Do you not feel like you can use your voice? It's like, it's like, I feel, it's almost like it's clogged, you know, and that's what acne actually is. It's like, it's clogged pores, right? They've become inflamed. So it's like your senses are clogged with other people's expectations, other people's beliefs, other conditioning based on your environment, based on the, the, the you know, um, your beliefs, what you were raised to believe. You want to allow yourself to be the, be you. That's basically you. As soon as you start truly expressing yourself, as soon as you start honoring that your identity is going to change based on what feels most authentic to you, because that's your gift. Your gift is to transform and to and to be sort of like a chameleon. So allow yourself to step out of the box and truly express this newness. Maybe for you, it's stepping into a different version of yourself, right? That you never thought was possible. And that's automatically also going to then look, it's going to open up your energy, which is then also going to your vessel, 
very much like what we spoke about with Debbie, your vessel is trying to tell you something. It's telling you that you're clogged. You're not able to express yourself. You're not able to be who you are. So my invitation to you as a fellow projector, I'm inviting you to truly step into what feels most authentic to me right now. Who do I want to be right now? How do I want to dress? What do I want to eat? Who do I want to socialize with? What music do I want to listen to? What movies do I want to watch? And how do I want to express? How do I want to use my voice to, to speak my truth? And it doesn't matter about the people who don't recognize you. It only matters about the people who recognize you because they will give you the invitation. Okay. Let us know. That gave me goosebumps, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and I love how that, you know, because that is in alignment with the emotional, of course. It's absolutely in alignment. So, um, and then Bissa was asking about, um, hi, hi, Lady Jacqueline and James. My name is Elizabeth Love. Could I have human design general reading? And she provided her birth and information. Do you already have that up, Jacqueline? Yes. Okay. I do. Okay, okay so, Bissa, so, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Manifesting generator. Literally love a manifesting generator energy. Uh, so first up, I want to just tell you, because it's general, I'm just going to see kind of what pops up for me, what I, what I feel like um, we need to hear today. Manifesting generators, the first thing, uh, there's two things. The first thing is boundaries. Because you've got this life force energy that literally directs your inspired action in the moment, and it's all about responding, responding to what life is giving you based on does it feel satisfying or does it feel frustrating? If it feels satisfying, go for it. If it feels frustrating, check in with it. And that leads me to the second thing, which is boundaries. So manifesting generators, and this also goes for generators, one of the biggest things is boundaries because we are attracted. And I say we because I don't have that defined, um, that uh, sacral center defined. So I'm attracted to your life force energy. A lot of the world is attracted to your life force energy, so you've got to set those boundaries. And for you, it's, you're all about connecting on an intimate level. You can connect with a person so intimately that it's almost like you kind of like question, oh, wait, did the actual person think there was alternative, like ulterior motives here? But it's actually you're, you're, because you're designed to connect with them on an intimate level so that you can open them up to vulnerability, right? So that you can open them up to to transformation, to change the way that they behave, to, to guide people through change, right? So for you, it's about making sure that you trust that life force energy because that life force energy, it's like, I always use it, everyone's going to be different, right? I always say it's like, it's a kid in a candy store feeling. So in order for you to know if this is the right action for you to take, you've got to feel like a kid in a candy store. Anything less than that, it's a no or a not right now. Uh, for a manifesting generator, that also goes for a generator. If there's a maybe, that's a no or not right now. A maybe is never a yes. So for you, I would really, I would kind of invite you to start, you know, um, trust, start setting boundaries with the right, with people in your life, your environment, making sure that, you know, you are following what feels good. You're entering into relationships because it feels good. And if you make it with frustration, it's because maybe you're giving your energy away to people that have overstayed their welcome because you don't feel good enough or because you're worried. So you've got something to prove. So, you know, you give it a little bit more. Mm -mm. For you, it's about knowing that you're naturally magnetic. I've got to set the boundaries because I've got to protect myself. And therefore, I, I, I basically empower other people to do the same. And that's pretty much what's, so for you, it's about trusting that life force energy. It's about your guidance system, which is that satisfaction and frustration. So making sure you're only doing things that feel satisfying to you. And then also um, when you hit that frustration, it's either giving you energy where you're not setting up those boundaries. Maybe you feel a lack of self-worth. So you're feeling like you need to prove. Or you also, you're also absorbing because you've got a completely open sacral, um, spinning center. You're absorbing the fears from everybody else. So if you're feeling fear right now, it's because it's somebody else's fear or it's fears that are coming up because of the transit energy, but it's your gift because that's how you become wise. You're absorbing it so that you can learn through the fear, you can move through it, you can dance with it like what we spoke about earlier, 
and you can actually get through it so that you can become wise, so that you can take inspired action that leaves you feel satisfying. Okay, let us know how that resonates with you. Yes. I, I love human I design. Sorry. sorry. No, go ahead. Do you, you want to maybe take, take a, a last, last question of Sophie? Sophie? Uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, dear Jacqueline and James, my name is Sophie, and she's given her details. Um, would you mind telling me how to have a human autistic general design, and more specifically, how to improve communication with others? Warmest thanks, Sophie. So, okay, well, I, 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 I look at a chart. chart. Do you, do you want, want to do, do some intuitive, or do you, do you want to mention something else? Absolutely, so... So for everybody listening, while, while Jacqueline is pulling up Sophie's information, um, by all means, um, join us each Wednesday. We love doing this, and we, we come together to offer intuitive guidance and human design guidance. Um, and you can reach both of us at our respective Instagram or Facebook um, portals and follow us on YouTube and all of that. And if we aren't able to get to a second question or or something. We try to get to everyone um, in the show and stay within kind of an hour and everything. Um, please feel free to reach out to us um, directly, um, just a private message or something, and uh, we'll try to answer those questions for you as well. And or join us again in the following week, and we'll we'll bring them back up and we'll do it again. So, um, and just to again kind of give you a recap, this is a really auspicious time. And Sam, this may answer your second question. It's an expansive time. Uh, it goes back to, I believe, Robin and, and so forth. So just really listen and have the ha allow that system, that jolt. You don't have to, you, you do need to, I, I believe they mentioned, Sam, that you, know, you do need to have a center, you know, that, that an umbrella organization always has its center, its core center. Decide what that core center is and then expand from there. Um, you don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You can expand and so forth. Just be strategic. You know, be very strategic. Maintain your life force, your energy. Um, some things that may be that you're 100% on this, and then all of a sudden you, you know, two weeks from now you are able to, re you know, kind of come back in, and you go 30% out on this, or 100% on this, and it pulls back. It, it's a beautiful dance. It's a beautiful um juxtaposition of all of those and so allow that to occur and happen while this energy of the moment which is auspicious carries us all forward go ahead Jacqueline so I want to quickly give feedback um but uh Sophie also please just confirm with me that you were born on the your day is the third and always at the fifth just quickly just double check because it's the is it the third day like um and the fifth month or is it the fifth day in the third month and then i want to kind of give you some feedback so Bissa says thank you so much so exact been isolating a lot due to the energy of other people definitely will work on more boundaries and working a lot on trusting myself thank you so much that's really been a theme today is like trusting yourself right and we spoke about that last week as well. And then Amy also says, um, wow, I got goosebumps too. Yes, I've been struggling to find my voice, afraid to shift change because of the into uh, wait, no, because of working towards something specific. It's the intuition to know when to let go. Thank you for letting me know. It's okay to be a chameleon. Thank you, James. I feel very much um, a delicate thank you for your guidance. That was absolutely beautiful. Okay, Sophie, third of May. That's fantastic. Okay, so looking at your chart quickly, you wanted to know about. Let me just quickly double check. It was uh, how to improve communication with others. Okay, so when we see your human design chart, also manifesting generator, love manifesting generator babies, literally, you guys are designed to work fast. So you're designed to skip steps, you're designed to show us how to actually move through things and also show us that there is no such thing as failure. For you specifically as well, Sophie, actually with your three, because you're a one three, your three is you're here to really show us that there's no such thing as failure because you gain wisdom through your experience. It's not only in how much you actually um, study, 
and learn, but it's also you've got to experience it. So you can hit the books, but sometimes life is going to ask you, come, we've got to go through the experience, right? If you look at your communication, so it's a very general like question, improve communication with others. First thing I definitely do notice is you've got a defined throat, right? So for you, let's talk about how you're designed to communicate so that you can understand how you're best designed to use your voice because you've got a very specific way of communicating. So honor that, right? For you, it's about sharing your stories. So you're here to, you, you, you teach other people and you inspire other people and you communicate in a way where you share your stories. So share your stories, share your story, share stories of other people that you've heard. You, that is also part of, um, you've got this leadership energy where you listen. It's like you're the voice of uh, the leader. So you you come here to be a leader when people look at you and say, oh, yes, can you please lead me because I see you doing this, right? Um, and also you're the voice of the leader. So sometimes you, you're going to be the, I almost want to say the life force energy behind maybe the figure that's in the front. It doesn't make you less than. It actually makes you, I want to say, more than because you're the voice of the person who's in the front. So there's that, that balance between the, the, the both worlds, right? So think about your question. And if you're saying you want to communicate better with other people, where are you not allowing yourself to be the leader based on because other people are, you're responding to other people wanting you to be the leader? Or are you actually also not comfortable being the voice of the leader? So maybe you're the voice of the person who's maybe in charge of this group, or organization, or business, and you're actually like their right hand in terms of the voice, right? Being their guidance, showing them in which direction to go based on your expression. Also about contribution. You hear, you use your voice to express your truth in a way that, that's creative, but in a way that's contributing. I've also got this this um, channel, so you can see for me, I've also got a defined throat center. I've got a very unique way of communicating. So when you hear my voice, you hear the way that I speak, it's going to be consistent like 90% of the time, or 99% of the time. With this 1A channel, it's about using your voice to truly express your truth. And sometimes when you ask the question of, I want to improve my communication with other people, this is the second thing that came up, is do you, have you gotten hurt a lot because you've truly expressed your truth and then you kind of felt like it fell like on deaf ears or people didn't really understand you or maybe they kind of their response or their reaction hurt so much because you're speaking from your soul, you're speaking from your truth, you speak from your essence. One thing for you to remember is you can't control other people's reactions, you can only control yourself. So in the, in the space where you're communicating and you're communicating your truth, allow yourself to speak your truth when you feel it's in response to something. So something came up and, oh, yes, I feel I feel satisfied. I feel like a kid in a candy store. I, I know that this is right because you've got intuition and you've got that life force energy. I know this is the right time to speak. Speak your truth and let it go and surrender to the reaction of the other. Okay, so there's two things. One, allow yourself to be the voice of the leader and allow yourself to be the leader if you if you if you respond to people asking you to be, and it feels good, right? And then the second thing is speak your truth without the expectation of what the other person is going to say, right? And that's a learning curve. I had to learn learn hard lessons in this because I, when I learned that I was speaking from my actual core, my soul, and if I got a rebuttal from a person and they were judging or they were critical, I was like, oh, I took it to heart, right? You've also got that open heart center. So for you, it's like, and you've also got the 51 actually, so maybe it's shocking. Sometimes the response when you speak your truth might be so shocking for you to hear and it might shock you to your core that you go, oh, I'm never going to speak again. I don't want to speak my truth, right? But you can't control someone else's reactions. All you can do is love yourself enough to know that I can trust when is the right time to say what I need to say and whatever they take, that's on them. I've spoken my truth. I'm, I'm of value and then kind of move on. Okay, let us know, does that resonate? Very deep, but it's two really powerful aspects and, and hopefully you can translate it in practically into what you're experiencing at the moment. That was beautiful, Jacqueline. <laughs> this is why these Wednesdays, I, I, I'm with uh, Sam here where she said, thank you, it helps a ton, James. Love these Wednesdays. The point 
I love these Wednesdays, Jacqueline. You and I coming together um, and offering this insight and everything from a human design perspective, from the unseen, from an intuitive standpoint. Yes, Sophia is saying thank you so much. Um, and what a brilliant light. So shine your light um, and do so without hesitation or reservation. And, and just simply, that's something, that's a truth for all of us. Shine your light and just do it from a standpoint where it's from a state of goodness. It need not de be dependent on someone else. It's simply for us to do what we know, as you just expressed, Jacqueline, you know, to do what we know from our, from our true center, ourself, and allow that from a, and from a state of goodness. Do no harm, but speak your peace, speak your truth, um, and stand in your light, um, because it is an expansive time. And hiding and being fixed and immobile and all that, mm, no, they're not having it anymore. <laughs> We're all being moved forward. I was going to say it's old news. Like those are old patterns that have been broken and we're ready to kind of step into this newness. Um, and if not, it's going to feel like the, you know, the rug is going to get pulled from under you. So don't wait for the rug to get pulled from under you. You know, follow the inclinations, the signs, the, it's like your inner, like there's a lot of generators, manifesting generators. It's all about trusting that body, that inclination of satisfaction. Does this feel satisfying? Kid in a candy store, oh, go for it. Does it mean that fear is not going to be there? No, fear is going to be there because we've been conditioned so much in a fear environment in society that we've now need to learn to dance with this fear. And in the past video, last week's video, if you want to go check it out, it's on YouTube, both my and, and James's account. We spoke about the different types of fear as well. It's about dancing with those fears, right? And then moving through them so that you can transcend, so you can actually be the better version of yourself. And then for the projectors is to feel invited, right? To get that in, in, that invitation so that you can, so that you feel recognized and feel seen. And then that's how you take inspired action. Um, this was absolutely incredible. I'm so glad we got more questions. It was so interesting because I got a few messages from last week, James, with a few people who were like, oh, I wanted to ask a question, but I was a little bit nervous. I didn't know how to ask a question. And I was like, just ask the question. Come now. Like, come on. Like, I want to ask questions. <laughs> 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 yes it's always 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 this is a beautiful safe space and absolutely always have the courage to show up and ask your question and see what the insight is and see how it resonates and everything and how it empowers you because ultimately it's always pure it's always from a good place and the absolute point of it is your empowerment that's that's it that's the beauty that's the gift that we receive in return so for everybody listening and and participating and asking questions. Thank you all so much because it's it's our honor and privilege to do it. Um, and it's a gift you give us because even though we're reading for you, if you will, we receive through your questions and through your life experiences and everything. So it's a, it's a really wonderful uh, gift of reciprocity. So with that, Jacqueline, we're, we're here next Wednesday, same time, same station. Um, and, uh, We'll leave. We'll leave with that. We're we're we've run uh, we've run a little long today, but that's all right. We're we're doing uh, we're doing great works with everyone. Thank you so much for that. We really appreciate you showing up, Jacqueline. Before we head out, thank, thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. much. We, look we look forward, forward to, seeing to seeing you next week, week Wednesday. Wednesday. And then also, if you've missed the replay and you want to continue watching from the beginning, it's going to be available on both. Facebook and YouTube on both my account at the Lady Jacqueline and then also Dear James at Dear James. Um, we will see you next week. And then also um, I invite you to actually tag a friend or two that wants to maybe or that would benefit from hearing this message because even though it was personal questions, it was questions that could relate to a lot of people that you might know. So maybe tag them in and say, you know, this is for you. Give it a listen. Um, because we're really about helping each other so we can all transcend, so we can be the better versions of ourselves. And this is why we're here. Thank you so much for being in our energy and for giving us the absolute privilege of being in yours. And we will see you next week, Wednesday. Thank you, everyone. You've been listening to Dear James Live. Gain intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions and so much more by tuning in next week and visiting DearJames.com.